Here at Central Marine, also a brand that we carry is the Ranger line. Here we have a 2050 Riata. The Riata is Ranger's fish and ski family fun model that uh, you can fish, ski, cruise, and this happens to be 20 feet powered by a Mercury 225 horse Verado. Uh, over here we have the new 175 tiller that Ranger came out with last year that has gotten to be a very popular boat, especially in the lakes around here, around Alexandria. It is fitting in very, very well for Ranger in their lineup. And in the background here you see other Princecraft pontoons, uh, their deck boat, uh, from a triple tune 25 foot down to the 17 foot. If you're looking for an entry-level watercraft, and from sea to watercraft and Ollie service here in Alexandria, I invite you to come in and take a look at the SE-130 watercraft. This is one of the most popular watercraft in the world. Number one selling watercraft. This has brakes, neutral, mirrors, room for three people on it, 130 horsepower, plenty of room to ski and tube with, very fuel efficient. We invite you to come in, take a look, make your best deal at Ollie's right here in Alexandria, 1213 Broadway. Today in Form TVs in uh, uh, the Ottertail Lake area, Walker Lake Hatchery. Uh, Jim, introduce yourself and what we're going to see here for the viewers of Inform TV. Well, uh, hello there. My name is Jim Walters. I'm the area fishery supervisor out of our Fergus Falls DNR office. And uh, we are at the Walker Lake State Fish Hatchery. This is one of, uh, of uh, eight uh, cool water hatcheries that we have in the state. And we are in the process of taking uh, walleye eggs for our walleye production program, uh, operating on the Dead River, uh, northwest side of, of Otter Tail Lake. What, what do you see? And I was just talking to one of the guys here. The uh, all the walleyes uh, coming in are, are full of eggs yet. Uh, what? How do you think the spawn is as far as uh, what stage of it is? Well, we're kind of right in the middle of it right now. Uh, we're about two, two and a half weeks behind this year because of the uh, the late spring that we've had. Um, but the walleyes are ripe right now. They're coming in. We're about in the middle of our uh, our egg take process. So looking to wrap up here within probably another four or five days of operation. What, what about some of the other hatcheries around the state, uh, Grand Rapids, that type of thing? Are they milking walleyes at all yet? Right, pretty much all the stations uh, except our uh, egg take station up in uh, uh, Cutfoot Sioux okay. uh, have started and are actually in the process or maybe at the, at the peak of their runs also. What we're seeing on a statewide basis is a real intense run. Uh, those fish basically have been ready for uh, a few weeks already, waiting for lakes to open up, the water temperatures to warm up, and so we're seeing a, a big pulse of uh, walleyes uh, in these runs. So, in, in nature, is there any way that if it, they wait too long, they just abort the eggs, or do they always try to do their thing? They'll always try to spawn. Walleyes, uh, pike are, are the first spawners. Walleyes are, are behind the pike. Um, they will make their runs even with a late season like this. They're going to make their runs, they're going to spawn. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, the later the season, uh, almost the better it okay. is because we don't get, or there's less likely to get the cold fronts that come in that, uh, for instance, last year with the early spring, some of those things can really affect uh, walleye year classes with the cold front sec that come in and drop in the water temperatures. What, what from the standpoint, I'm old school, of course, and uh, Minnesota's always had the, the process of, of closing the season from basically the first of March until the second weekend of May, yet states like North Dakota, South Dakota uh, haven't done that. Uh, by letting uh, the traditional opener going on, uh, we're protected by Mother Nature with ice, of course, but uh, uh, is it is it necessary to do what we're doing? Uh, I feel bad we're not being more restrictive. Is is that uh, uh, wise or, uh, or what's your thought? Well, the uh, the opener is definitely tradition. Um, you know, biologically speaking, like you mentioned, the other states uh, uh, have year-round openers and really don't see the effect on the on the fish populations. Uh, what we can do and what we have done in the last 20 year plus years is we have 
quite a few walleye regulations on lakes to, to protect fish of certain sizes. And, um, you know, we feel that, that that's the way to provide opportunity to fish, um, but yet uh, have some protection. So in a late year like this, uh, we do have areas that we have posted closed um, where there's real, a lot of concentration of fish. But generally speaking, lakes that have regulations will protect those fish that we want to protect and still allow some of the harvest. Our, our walleye populations are in real good condition and, and um, so um, you know, I'm not that concerned with a, a little bit of harvest going on too of, uh, of the smaller fish. What about a fisherman out this weekend catches a nice uh, big female that's full of eggs yet? Uh, uh, is that going to have any effect on her? Traditionally when the female's uh, about ready to spawn, will she not eat or what's the process that way? Yeah, that's usually the case. Uh, the closer they get to actual spawning, they're probably not interested in eating. They're going to spawn and then be done and then they, they kind of have a recuperation period before they really start you know, feeding again. Um, generally speaking, openers, people are catching a lot of the smaller males that are, are still up in the shallows or, or in the rivers. Um, this year there will be probably some females that will be there too. Most anglers I think have a, a good conservation ethic where they would release them but um, you know it's def it's legal to uh, to keep one over 20 inches too uh, in your in your bag limits. Okay I, it looks like the guys are getting about set up but uh, well, what are we going to be seeing here as far as uh, the crew working with uh, females and males today? Right we're gonna you're gonna see the process of us taking the walleye eggs fertilizing the eggs um, uh, sorting the males and the females uh, we keep keep those separate for our fertilization uh, process so you're gonna see a lot of game fish too uh, basically when we block the river off all those species of fish that are coming upstream we catch we're just interested in the walleye so everything else gets cut loose when uh, we're done what's your thought are the northerns done uh, spawning pretty much yeah when we first started uh, last Sunday was our first uh, uh, day that we took eggs uh, we were getting quite a few pike, but now pike numbers have gone way down. Like I said, this is with this late year, uh, pike and walleyes, they've been ready for quite a you know, number of weeks already, and it's going to be short and intense, uh, the spawning uh, season. Okay, well, and, and you as a fishery person, you think uh, it's, it's actually going to be a positive for the population potentially? Well, I think, you know, with the late year, uh, pending any real cold fronts that would come in, and as, you know, we're already into the first part of May here, um, I, I think it could, could set up for a good, uh, real good walleye year class year here. Okay, well that sounds good, Jim. We look forward to going down to the river here and, and looking at the rest of it. All right, so thank you. Thank you. Sir, what, are you uh, putting the females in that? Uh, how, what? These are all females. These are all females. That was a big male. Days. All the fish we caught last night are over, over on the other side. And those were ones, ones that aren't ready to give their eggs yet. They, they're not ready, so you just flip them over. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Wales Hearing Center is proud to be part of the Starkey Hearing Alliance, and I hope you enjoy these videos explaining all the benefits of the latest developments of Starkey hearing aids, especially the mobile surfling. Hi, I'm Judy from Pete's County Market Floral. Come on in and see our variety of our green plants, our blooming plants, and our long stem roses. For all your floral needs, contact me, Judy, at PetesCountyMarket.com. Hi, Mike Nees, produce manager here at Pete's County Market. We've just expanded our fresh organic fruits and vegetables. As you can see behind me here, we have many different items to choose from. Come check us out next time you're in the store. Remember this holiday season, whenever you get to Alexandria, uh, make sure you stop in at the local Cenex store that has gas, tires, LP, and a great convenience store. You a fishing line hanging on. Oh, what were you doing oh, earlier yeah. down here, Dave? Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see it? Have a look. What was it? It's the fishing line. Uh, no, it's in there. You want what you could okay. do is just kind of yeah, like an S shape back and forth. Okay. You want to wait for more eggs? <laughs> wow. Oh. It's still <laughs> using the eagle feather for the blender, huh? I know. I feel special. <laughs> nice to see you. Oh, I was gonna yeah. say, you know, <laughs> 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 a big fat one on over. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs>
So how many males do you take and put in here versus females? Two, two to three turns, like coming up here and getting a good look at it. So are the males always ready to go then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yo, have you ever met one that wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Oh, that is pretty good. <laughs> good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can get up. You might get a little wet there. You know, <laughs> quarter to a half a quart. Even a quart of eggs, there's an average of 135,000. So crazy. Wow. No, I got it. You can shoot one right in there. What's the biggest you female? Load of, you can bring another load of females or males. Okay. Yeah, if you haven't seen this too yet. How big of females have you guys had in this year yet? Some, any 10 pounder stuff? They're probably 10, but uh, typically with, you know, 28. Maybe 29. We don't see many 30 inch fish coming in. Okay. A little more this way. Yeah, so no, that's that way fine. they can see. Of course. These would be males now? Yep, these are males. Uh, and can you show us uh, how you guys determine which is which, Jim? Sure. So just a little press. Oh, okay, on that's the, on the stomach, just, and you can see the it's the, the button then. Them out. Okay, yep. you just so that's, a, that's a male. Uh, there, there's no characteristics as far as a curve on the tail or anything there's like no, that. Nothing uh, <laughs> physically. <laughs> the females. Uh, you'll see the egg mass. Uh, sure. The larger in the in the stomach area. But, uh, yeah. And from a standpoint, Jim, uh, as far as. Uh, uh, the size, if, if, if you pick a one out that's a female that's only a pound and a half or two, you still milk her? Or? You bet. Uh, they'll probably, the, the first time females that come in are, you know, maybe as small as 13 and a half, 14 inches. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, not a lot of eggs, but that's, uh, that's when they start to sexually mature. <laughs> so. okay. And what, what would be a typical size female you're milking? In, in this run, we're probably, uh, you know, around that 20 to 22 inch. That's a pretty common uh, size female here. And, and if you go up uh, to a 30 inch, will you get twice as many eggs, or what's your thought that well, way? Well, we Any don't guesses? get a lot of 30 inchers. We did have a 28 and a half we measured, uh, which is probably our largest one that we've got so far this spring and uh, she might have a quart of eggs which is about uh, 135,000 eggs okay okay yeah. compared to that uh, uh, four pounder then uh, uh, or three pound walleye how much less uh, on average probably about half that you know maybe a 60 70,000 eggs okay yeah very good here we'll watch a little more we got some kids from Ashby here today is that the deal right okay and you guys know Jim Borgrud up there? Is that name ring a bell? Huh? Yes. Oh, okay, that's good. I'm going to sneak around the other side here. Oh, she's fine. Oh, we got some nice walleyes there, guys. Look at them. I'm going to lean over you a little bit. You're fine. Oh, look at the, oh, look at the nice fish here. Sir, you said these are from last night that you're... No, they're from previous days. And you let them rest before you release them, kind of? No, they're not ready to give their eggs yet. Okay, that's they're what it was. Ripe. So we hold them and then we check them each day after that. And then if they're not ripe yet, then we put them on the other side. And the ones that are ripe, we strip them. The, the males you'll find are always ripe. Does that feel? No problem with the males. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
throw it and Dixie's at her. Yeah, you are. And guys, for every female you milk, you also milk a male? Two to three males. Two to three males? Yep. Oh, okay. So you guys having a big rummage sale next weekend? Yeah. Exactly. That's pretty, pretty gradual at this week. What's that? Tell me about it. Yeah, that's, you know, I haven't seen many rummage sales because the weather's been so gradual, you know, so. Huh? It is a birthday. Otherwise, off earlier this weekend, a couple of weeks. Where's that? Yeah, she's so funny. Right, it's Tasha. <laughs> she's in shape for everything. <laughs> no, I was going to say she's in shape to block. <laughs> what? You get him next? Or her next? Okay. <laughs> now, Jim, uh, these eggs, what percent will hatch uh, a fertilize at first, I should say, when you're doing your thing here? Yeah, we have a, we have a pretty good uh, over a 90% fertilization rate. Uh, okay. Um, I would say 80 to 90%, and then we'll end up with about a 60 to 70% hatch. What about in nature? In nature, you, can, you know, generally you could probably figure one percent or less of, okay. of uh, you know the eggs that are laid naturally. But it uh, seems like a low percent. But keep in mind that we're actually only getting a fraction of the walleyes that are out there that are spawning um, in this run. So majority of fish uh, stay out in the lakes and, and uh, spawn on the shoreline. So. Okay, that, that's what I was wondering about. That right. in in nature, really, the the lakes if they have a good gravel bottom, or it, do they tend to search for that, or do they just oh, tend to? Yeah. Yep, they key in on the, those kind of areas, and uh, that's why it's kind of protecting those. Areas from uh, shoreline disturbances are really important in those lakes where natural reproduction is, is really providing the walleye opportunity. So a big lake like uh, Otter Tail here, that tends to be most of it just in the lake then that uh, uh, where the spawning is done. Right. Yeah, the tagging study that uh, that we did uh, back in the early 80s kind of found out that basically about 10% of the walleyes make upstream movements in the Otter Tail and uh, the Dead Rivers, and 90% actually stay out in the lake and spawn on uh, good habitat out there. Okay, that's interesting. As far as uh, <clears throat> what what depth would they tend to look for, or is, is it more of a, a structure thing for the big female? And right, it's more of a structure, uh, you know, shoreline areas. Generally, that kind of substrate that they're looking for is probably three foot or less, you know, maybe four foot or less uh, along shorelines. Uh, reefs that are out on uh, big reefs that may be out in some of the lakes, uh, shallow enough and have the... The pro, you know the right kind of bottom uh, they'll try to spawn on those or they will spawn on those areas too. okay and it, as, as far as uh, say uh, there's a, a six pound uh, female uh, ready to spawn how, how, how many female our males will be following her oh uh, you know probably if she's if she's ready to go there'll be probably at least a couple three behind her maybe up to four or five okay yep. and and from a standpoint uh, the females are obviously the biggest. Where, where do male walleyes tend to peak out as far as size? Well, we can, in this run here, in fact, yesterday I had, a, or the day before, I had a male that was probably about 22 inches, okay. which is really on the upper end. That's that's an old fish. That fish might be about uh, 18 to 20 years old. Wow. Okay. And uh, uh, most of these females you're milking, how old would they be, you think? Well, like I mentioned, uh, the, the, the first time females that come in at about 13 and a half, 14 inches, that's probably a four-year-old fish. Okay. And, uh, you know, obviously the bigger they are, the, the older they are, but uh, the average size fish we get here is probably about uh, anywhere from a six to eight-year-old fish. Okay. And do you provide eggs for any other hatcheries in the state or private hatcheries? We provide for other states. 
uh, state area needs. Um, we do provide some. For instance, this year we're going to be uh, getting some eggs for our Glenwood hatchery here. So uh, we also um, coordinate with Detroit Lakes to get. Uh, basically, we're getting Red River strain walleye. Okay. And the Detroit Lakes and the Fergus area here. We're the, the two sites statewide that provide the Red River strain fish. So, so we kind of work together to get what we need for our quota for Red River fish. Can you explain the difference between the strains we have in Minnesota? <clears throat> well, basically, we have three strains uh, that we're concerned about, and again, we don't. We're trying. We we don't stock across strain borders. <laughs> So we have the Red River strain here in the Red River Basin. We have the Mississippi strain, uh, which is basically down, you know, the middle part of the state. And then we have uh, Pike River strain that's up in the northeast. Now, as a uh, lifelong walleye fisherman, you know, you fish in areas where you have nice green walleyes and then some golden ones. Is, is that an environment or is that strain? That's, that's more environment. It uh, likely has nothing to do with strain. It's just the type of water that those fish are in, whether it's a bog stained or a clear lake, those fish will reflect what the light penetration or kind of the, in the bog stained lake, stain lakes with the tannic acid, they'll tend to be a little more golden color. They won't have a white belly, they'll have kind of a gold. And uh, uh, I'm trying to watch everything here, of course, but uh, uh, from a standpoint of the three strains, if, if you were showing us uh, the three strains, would we see any sizable difference if they were in the same water or not? No, physically no. You want the the strain difference is probably you know performance. Those strains were uh, isolated over many many years ago, and uh, actually have adapted or to perform better in those environments like up in the northeast versus over here. So we're just trying to keep those strains into those uh, watersheds. Uh, when we uh, stock them. If uh, an outstate group wants some uh, Minnesota walleyes, what strain, is there such a thing of the three strains, is one uh, better that it's going to go in a different area, or what's really, your thought that way? Yeah, really, uh, basically, we don't sell to the, to the uh, uh, other other so states, um, so other states have contracts with our private fish growers in the state of Minnesota, and of course they have different strains too. And uh, so it's kind of worked out with that state and the private growers maybe to what strain they want to, to fit their lakes. For example, uh, Spicer I think's got a private hatchery, don't they? Uh, yeah, I think there's a couple of them operating in that area. And do they, uh, by law, are they required to get eggs from the state, or can they strip walleyes as well? They can uh, They can develop their own brood ponds uh, under their private hatchery license, and there are uh, a, a few private bait dealers or private uh, hatchery uh, uh, operators that do that. They basically have developed their larger walleyes, and they do their own egg take and raise them on, in their own hatchery, and then they sell them both in state and out of state and of course we have the strain consideration uh, for uh, lake associations or, or uh, shoreline owners around private lakes if they want to stock walleye from a private vendor we take into consideration those strain uh, strain boundaries too and require them to get the correct strain wonderful i'll let you get back to work for a little, a little bit and i'll probably think some more questions Jim. thank you very much mm -hmm. Hey, sir, can you introduce your class to Inform TV from uh, Aspie? Sure, this is uh, the sophomores from Aspie High School, and we're here watching them. Well, we've been doing this now for 26 years. We come here every year and watch them go through the uh, stripping process of these walleyes. And uh, if you've been here for a number of years, do you see anything different this year? Or? Uh, no, I don't see anything different this year. Last year there was probably a few more in this net, but uh, it's about the same every year. Okay, well that sounds great. Uh, good to see you folks here. And uh, anybody watching TV off the selective group, uh, uh, Jim Borgrud is uh, a guy I work with, so some of you or your families I'm sure know Jim. Great guy there from Ashby. I think his address is Ashby, isn't it? Yeah, he lives right down the road from me. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. If you're looking for an ATV, this is the place to come and shop. Ollie Service, right here in Alexandria, have the full lineup of Can-Am ATVs. We have the Max Series with the two-up. 
We've got the standard series right now. We got power steering, we got manual steering. We've got all the different colors, so I invite you to come in. 1213 Broadway, right here in Alexandria, and get you into a new Can-Am ATV. That's what you're doing for okay. viewers and farm TV. Okay. Um, in nature, walleyes lay their eggs on a rocky gravel substrate, and the eggs will stick to the rocks and hatch out. But in a hatchery, we got to have all individual eggs. So I give them a fine coating of bentonite. It's a clay that takes away the natural stickiness on the eggshell. So I'll put a couple of dippers on, and then I'll swirl it up, and as they get coated, they'll kind of pop to the surface here. Then I'll rinse off the excess and put them in our egg tub here. Okay. In the egg tub, they'll go up to the hatchery and they'll sit in a floater for about four hours where they'll water harden, we call it, where the egg will absorb water and about double in size. At that point, we can handle them. Right now, they're real fragile. Okay. So I'll just rinse off the excess here. And the screen is fine enough that the eggs stay in the screen? Yep. And the tub here, the yellow is the the, the eggs, and yep. and they retain a little bit of uh, a clay on them yet. A real fine coating will adhere to the eggshell. Yeah. Okay, that's all it takes. Yep. And I just gently float them off. How full are you guys getting with your uh, capacity inside the building? Are you getting about full, or you still got a long ways to go? Uh, we're probably a little over half our quota. Okay. So how many more days do you think you're going to be doing this? Well, through the weekend into next week. Okay. It all depends on the, how, how the fish run. Okay. Excellent. And this process uh, that you're using today, w when was that established and how long have you been doing the same thing or do you change things just a little bit? Uh, uh, or? The basic com concept that we're doing right now, that was uh, probably the early 1900s when it was first started out. Uh, there was a fish hatchery in St. Paul and then there was a fish hatchery over on Ottertail Lake at Pleasure Park. And they were a couple of the earliest fish hatcheries in the state. They'd hatch out the fish at Pleasure Park and they'd load the fry in the cream cans and put them on the train and haul them to St. Paul. Okay. And, and they were bringing, uh, um, I wasn't listening, I'm filming as, sure. as well, uh, uh, the, the eggs that got on the train, where, where were they coming well, out of? Those were, they, they did ship eggs, but most of the time they'd hatch them out as fry. Oh, okay. The newly hatched walleye. And then and, bring the, the, the fry them, up on train. Yep, they put them on the train and ship them to St. Paul. Okay, I hope my audience heard that, but I uh, uh, just want to clarify it. So. They, they'd also ship eggs at times, too. Okay. And the, are the eggs somewhat similar to a, like a fish, or can they be in stagnant water, or do they have to have um, a certain degree of oxygen as well? Yeah. If um, they're laid on a silty bottom, they'll cover up with silt and they'll smother. Okay, that's what I was wondering so that's about. That's why uh, a rocky gravel substrate free of silt on the water for the You know, some of the lakes in southern Minnesota, there's not a lot of sand in some of those lakes. And they got very limited natural reproduction. Because of that. And that's where a hatchery comes into play, hatching out walleye fry and supplementing that population. Wonderful. Thank you. Yep. Just give me a little idea of the area we're photographing today. How many you got in there yet? Not many. I'm thinking 300 or so. 
What what what's the the most you guys ever catch in a run like this in a typical day? The biggest day we'll have will maybe have two thousand walleyes. Okay, you do, and will you run that many, or you end up letting some of them go? Oh, uh, we'll go through them all during that day. Okay, we'll check them all. And how long does it take to go through a couple thousand walleyes? Uh, probably three hours. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, you said you're just waiting for the guys to uh, switch the eggs. And right, They're, they carried the eggs up that, from the from yesterday's fish that were ready to go today. So they just carried those up because we don't want to fill the tub up too full. Like yourself, uh, what kind of background do you have? Uh, uh, I I got my undergrad and master's degree at uh, South Dakota State. And my undergrad's in wildlife fisheries, and then my master's is in fisheries. So yeah, title-wise, you're uh, I, I'm the uh, assistant at uh, supervisor at the Fergus Falls Area Fisheries. Oh, okay. So Jim is the supervisor, then I'm the assistant. In in Fergus there, yes, and correct. And uh, what uh, counterparts? What do you have in Glenwood? Uh, you know, it's basically the same thing where they have a supervisor, assistant. Uh, three specialists and then two technicians. How, how big a staff do you guys have at the, the Fergus? Uh... We've got we've got supervisor and assistant, two two specialists and two technicians. Okay. And then, then when we operate this, we hire, we've got six seasonal guys that we bring on just to, to run the hatchery. And, you know, the hatchery runs for roughly two months at the most, month, month and a half. Okay, so uh, when you're done here in two months, you we, just we button it up? We and... close everything up, yeah. Okay. We basically winterize it or once we're done, so. What about yourself? Uh, you a walleye fisherman? You gonna be out this weekend? Or? <laughs> I'm not gonna, we're gonna be working tomorrow. Okay, that's yep. right, I yep. should've known that. Yep. But, yep. And uh, uh, from a standpoint of uh, any thoughts on advice to people as far as this I, easy season? My recommendation is leave the boats at home and get your waders on and fish from shore. Okay, because so. they'll be in really shallow, right? Yep. yep, and there isn't gonna be much open water anyway. So. I, I remember one year I, I was fishing so shallow my uh, Minn Kota was hitting the bottom and everybody uh, it was at night and everybody else was out and said what are those two idiots doing in in shoreline and and uh, we had 12 walleyes in the boat in an hour yep. So. Yep. so okay thank you yep. welcome to central marine and sports my name is eric we're out here today at our back showroom looking at prince craft pontoons we have several models back here this happens to be the vectra line and we have three different layouts right here. We have the side-by-side -side seating. It's a XT model, a little different layout than you're used to in a pontoon uh, with the side-by-side -side seating, but it's very nice if just two people go out for a cruise, you can sit beside each other and have a nice conversation. Here we have a model with uh, two fishing seats in the back. And all three of these I'd like to bring up are all powered with Mercury outboards. They all happen to be 115 horse. And then this model over here is just a nice cruising model. Got a couple reclining uh, lounging chairs up front, uh, tilt steering. Uh, very easy to come out and take a look and compare three different models right here side by side. We're going to talk a little bit about the northern uh, uh, run. Sir, uh, introduce yourself again. I, I'm Howard Fullhart. I'm the assistant supervisor here at the Fergus Falls Area Fisheries Office. Tell us a little about the northern spawn, how that happens and what you're watching in this area. Right. Um, Northerns, they actually spawn before the walleyes do. Uh, in a year like this, the, the Northerns will actually spawn, they'll make the run up the creeks and the rivers and everything else before, a lot of times before the ice even goes out, that they're looking for any, any kind of marshy area, freshwater area where they can run up and spawn. So, uh, anytime we set our nets last Tuesday, two, basically it had been almost two weeks ago, and in that run it was pretty much all northern pike, so we knew then that the walleyes hadn't been coming up yet. So, okay. Um, so what and what 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 they're doing too is they're looking they're looking to they actually attach their eggs to the cattails and different things like that that they don't spawn on the on the ground they're going out into the vegetation and spawning in the vegetation. So. Okay, and as far as uh, uh, Jim was telling us before that uh, uh, walleyes tend to be the majority of the spawning is in the lakes. What what about northerns? They 
Will they do that too, um, percentage-wise? Northerns, or not? for the most part, are looking for they're looking for fresh water. So that's why you see them running up creeks and rivers in the springtime. When you always hear about people seeing seeing northerns running up in their ditch when we have high water or if you have flooding and everything else, that's what they're doing. Is they're actually looking for fresh water. So they actually want to go up out of the lakes for the most part. But if if there isn't that opportunity, that you know they will spawn in the lakes too. But they again they need the cattail areas and the in the more of the marshy areas and stuff like that too, and vegetation because it again. And they need to spawn on the veg. Their egg mass is attached to the to the vegetation. And 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 the male will come in in that same area. Yep. And and will the eggs attach during fertilization? Basically, basically, when they're when they're broadcasting their eggs out, those males are are fertilizing as it goes, and then those eggs will settle out and stick. They're they're a real sticky egg, so they'll actually stick to it once it comes out. Then, so. What about the gestation of these eggs? Walleyes, northerns. Yeah, can you give us any time length? One any difference? It's all det it's all determined by water temperature. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, uh, you know, if, if water temperatures would stay cold, it, it, it'll take anywhere from two weeks to three weeks, right around that three weeks. If water temps really spike up, you know, we, you can actually hatch them out probably in nine days even. So, What about in the hatchery here? How long does it take typically here? Typically, we're trying to hold... Because we can we can regulate what our water temps are up there, so typically we're trying to hold those fit, those eggs for almost three weeks. The reason we do that is we want to make sure that when we stock our fry out, that the lakes and our ponds have all warmed up enough so that there's actually the zooplankton and the food is out there. So so it's ideal conditions when we stock the fry out there that they can that they'll have the food available to them. So now you're taking the fry from this hatchery into man-made ponds, or do you got some they're, sloughs, they're, they're, or they're, they're natural kind of wetlands and stuff like that that we can. That we can, and that's what we call our walleye rearing ponds. That we raise, we'll stock fry in there, and then go back in the fall and net them out as fingerlings, and then we stock them into the area lakes also. How tricky is that? Do you get most of them out, or you, you probably only get, uh, or a lot of people say you only get about a third of them out of there. So, and will they are, are they tend to be in ponds and they'll just die when we, freezes? That's, that's what we hope for. Is is like a year like this now? We've gone to a couple of our ponds and we've actually got pretty good winter kill around the area this year. Okay. If you if you don't get the winter kill, then you get those. Uh, the larger fish will actually prey upon and feed on our smaller ones and we're actually looking for numbers as much as we are not as much on size wise when we're doing fingerlings so. now, now as far as winter kill of this last year what what uh, took place in the area here Fergus Alexandria what, we, what we've been seeing is we are we went to a couple of them yesterday and, and we have just noticing some of these other smaller lakes and everything else that we had because of the the long period of snow that we've had on these lakes that uh, we had very good winter kill for for our ponds and stuff. Now. What about so, the the game fish uh, lakes? Was there much winter kill that way? We've seen, you know, in, in ba certain bays and everything else, we have seen some winter kill in them. Uh, I, I suspect some of our smaller lakes that we're going to have some winter kill there. Typically, we don't. It's not a full kill, so those lakes can usually recover from those partial kills. So. Now, I, I had some viewers call me from. Uh, uh, Lake Christina that uh, they did some duck things there, but yep. there was a ton of northerns they said died. Do you, do you guys yep. get any heat on that one or not? We don't because luckily that's a that's a wildlife management unit now. That is not nothing to do with fisheries anymore. So oh, we turn okay. that over to all wildlife. So. Okay, because there was a lot of locals mad they yep. wanted to. Yep. And see now that fish. is clo that's close to fishing any time now down there. So so that again that is being specifically managed for ducks in that area so oh, okay so. even though there was a lot of northerns they told me exactly and there and there was oh, okay <laughs> so, but there was a lot of other fish too for and for the the, the system the ecosystem itself it it it's a good thing to get the the winter kill out there so oh, okay thank you much sir you bet. So. hi i'm alan repke inform tv alexandria minnesota i hope you enjoy the programming only an independent tv station from outstate minnesota can bring to you uh, our viewers on challenging issues, politics, local events, and many items in outstate Minnesota that no one else covers. I hope you always enjoy what we present or at least think about what we are presenting here at Inform TV as we expand our coverage and programming options for you, the people of Minnesota. And I surely hope that whenever you do business in the Alexandria Lakes area or any place in Minnesota, you remind the people you buy from that you enjoy an independent station, Inform TV, and ask them to advertise us with Inform TV. Because without ad revenue, we can't continue to bring you unique programming, 
challenging political views, and soon news and weather like many of you have asked. So get out there and work for Inform TV and I pledge to you I will continue to bring unique programming that I believe all of us should see and either be challenged by, informed by, or just plain good entertainment from the people of Outstate Minnesota. As always, thanks for watching Inform TV. These are the fish again that came in last night. And okay. just, we block the river off and every fish that swims up the river comes into the trap here. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're we're gonna just crowd the fish to the one to one corner so we can actually now go through all the fish. So look for the females that are that are ripe and ready to be stripped out and then the, the ones that are still what we call green or not ready to go, we'll put them and hold them in our crib for one day or two days and for the most part it this year anyways it's taken one day and they're they'll be ripe the next day. So, oh, okay. And then we'll take all the males that we get today and we'll hold them for the fish to for tomorrow to fertilize the eggs That tomorrow. female's smart enough to know she doesn't come in the river until she's ready, in you other bet, words. You bet, you uh, bet. Okay, go do your thing. I don't want Jim to get mad at you. Oh, he's always mad. Okay, he's a good boss then, huh? <laughs> And kind of look over your shoulder, gentlemen. So, all right, he's got that. Steve, yep. <laughs> Get in the ball. Get up, coming. Pull ball. Pull ball. Pull ball. That's the way my live well usually looks, guys. <laughs> well, we'll be giving you a ticket. <laughs> Oh, that's enough pull! <laughs> Good pull, for retirement. Yeah, I was gonna say, car. he just swaps the plates out on them. <laughs> you guys hunting turkey then, or what you hunting? Turkey, yeah. You seeing them any? Yeah, yeah the one sitting next to you, right? Ah, I was gonna say that, but I'm shy. This side needs to go on there before that side does. Right. So pull that back out. Damn it, you weren't doing nothing over there. Well, I was waiting. <laughs> there! See you later. Better get out of the way here so I don't end up in the river. In nature, how, how fast can she let her eggs out? Or what's typical? Any thought, guys? Mike, you got that one? You're the wall. You're, you're in top of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, my audience needs to know, uh, in the natural process, uh, 
how, uh, what what uh, walleye does as far as when she spawns, uh, uh, how how quick is that process done? Can you tell us? What would you say? A couple minutes. A couple, mi couple minutes. Okay. Well, that's all we want to know. Thank you. For the most part, what happens is the female swims along. She lets her eggs out, and then usually the couple three males with her, and they let their sperm out, and then the eggs get fertilized. Okay. Thank you. Got a nice catch here today, guys. My viewers are going to be very en envious. I'll get out of your way here and yeah. One pretty, a couple pretty good sized walleyes there. Eli, bad fish, bad fish. Well, they're rough fish. They're like carp, right? Yep. In my view, they are. <laughs> Pour some water on his head, Eli. <laughs> Eli, here's Dad's fish. That's what. That's <laughs> that's Iowa, Iowa State fish, fish right there. Iowa State fish. <laughs> they don't have whiskers, they're no good. Oh, a nice big northern in there today. <laughs> Was that a female or a male? That big one? Nope. Oh, the big ones are females. That, that's, that's your female right there, okay. You got one of you guys get some more get some more males here. You can put them in the tub there. Take the males that you can How is that a female? Yeah. Just the the nice. That's what we like to see in our net. Thank you. Yeah, some 
them little ones are too hard to hang on to. Oops, sorry. Yep. Oh, there's a big one. Nice. Jim, is there anything else I should be thinking about or should I let, get the heck out of the way so you guys can work in peace? Well, this is about what we do and we just keep doing this until we get all the right females uh, done for the day and do the same thing the next day. Okay, then that, uh, is, is there anything different in the fishery coming along or science-wise or uh, Mother Nature's much Mother Nature? Uh, you know, pretty much uh, we do this every year. Um, you know, our techniques are, are the same from uh, year to year and have been for quite a while. Um, you, know, you may want to take a look up at the hatchery and get a few shots of the eggs and the, sure. and the jars and things. And then, uh, what what if, uh, if your lift tests and stuff in the area, how, how do you... <clears throat> well, you know, in our area, our walleye populations are in pretty good shape. Um, we've had some uh, record net catches on some of our lakes the last few years. So, okay. Um, whether it's natural reproduction or in some cases some stocking that we're doing, you know, have, have been pretty successful. So, is, is any of the lakes or many of the lakes uh, a size limit like the Mille Lacs and that kind of thing? Any thought on that for any of the local lakes? Or? We do have a number of lakes that have regulations not only for walleye but uh, crappie, bass, pike. So, um, and they're actually oh, okay. too numerous to list here, but if you look in the fishing regulation book, uh, you know, look under the lake that you're going to be fishing and see if it's in Ottertail County and the regulation will be listed there. You know, I, I think, uh, and uh, my viewers, uh, the dropping the crappie limit back was a tremendous success. Any thought on that? A lot of bigger crappies now or not? It, it, it has had a positive um, impact on the crappie population. Uh, we also have some minimum, uh, you know, fish have to be 10 or 11 inches. Uh, we've seen some benefits of that regulation also, but uh, uh, you know, people can still, uh, we're still having people when the crappie bite is hot, uh, kind of go out and double bag and triple bag, okay. you know, um, so they can still have an impact on the crappie population. What about, you know, there's a lot of controversy with uh, Malax, some of their slots that uh, uh, I remember one time I went out in a launch out there and uh, there was like 24 of us uh, fishing at night and fish floating on top in the summertime and, and nobody been able to take any uh, home to eat because everything was in that slot. Uh, what The fishery uh, groups as far as uh, argument, uh, when you guys get together, what's the discussion on this slot and finding the right slot? Well, and that's, you know, Mille Lacs, that's kind of a, an outlier for uh, regulations. It's actually, we're, we're co-managing that with the, uh, with the tribes. Uh, the Native American tribe, so um, you know, I'm not involved with any of that discussion, but there's there's kind of a, a cooper cooperative, uh, you know, discussions on what the regulation should be for the upcoming year based on what uh, pounds estimated uh, harvested can come from the lack. So there's a lot uh, that goes into determining what type of reg. Sure. And uh, even within seasons, there's some some uh, differences that come out too. So. What, what I was really getting at is, you know, we see uh, I think Leech and and more lakes seem to be getting a slot. Uh, how's the discussion going of you professionals in the state? Uh, 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 have they found the so-called uh, magic? Uh, 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 do, should they be adjusting the slots or, you know, there's a lot of controversy among fishermen. I'm not trying yeah. to put you on the spot, I'm right. just trying to give give a, a little idea of what's going on yeah. in the discussion. Well, what I can do is explain the process. When we put a regulation on a lake, it's usually experimental and there's usually an end date. So, uh, and, and the regulations generally run about 10 to 12 years. Okay. And after that time, uh, we will reevaluate that regulation and we have three options. We can either extend that regulation and put it under a special regulation 
we can drop it all together and just go back to the statewide regulation, or we can modify it. And uh, um, of course, we're gathering information all during that time the regulation is on, so we have the data to find out if the regulation is working or not. Uh, the public input, uh, we have to uh, go through that. Uh, the public has a chance to provide input on their thoughts if the regulation is working or not. We take all that into consideration when we make that final determination of whether we modify, drop, or, or extend the regulation. Sure, and uh, what about bag limits on walleyes when uh, uh, we're not getting your view of just kind of the discussion when you professionals get together? Uh, are they still content with the six walleye? Or they, uh, uh, is there a move to move it to four daily or an eight in possession or anything like that? Or? Well, you, you mentioned uh, the crappie bag limit reduction that yep. took effect. And at that same time when we were getting public input for that, we also, uh, we had 19 meetings statewide, and this was back in the early 2000s. Um, and, and reducing the walleye bag was an option that we proposed to the public um, to drop it down to, to two, two or three fish. And basically, people wanted the bag limit to stay the same. So uh, we've kind of went through that process. We're not looking at that, at least in the immediate future, um, to, to look at that again. So Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of a four daily and eight possession type of yep. guy like you said because like you said you get a too restrictive people just double bag anyway and right which and is actually illegal. gets worse illegal plus right. it probably takes more fish off the lake than right. a reasonable uh, deal anyway uh, Jim uh, thank your whole crew for letting inform TV come on and and show the people of central Minnesota what uh, the great work you do and uh, uh, the fishermen out there all pat you on the back and uh, uh, any way we can help you, uh, let us know, and, and we'll, we'll do some coverage of what you guys need. You bet. Well, thank you. Thank you. We'll just give you folks a little idea of the size of the building where the hatching is going on out here at uh, the Walker Lake Hatchery. A little idea of what uh, is here, the eggs in the containers there in the process, and uh, water process going on here. You just walk ahead a little bit with the camera and uh, give you a little idea of what kind of very basic facility, you know, fancy offices. They got the species on the wall there. They had a group of kids in here from uh, and showed them some things on the TV there. Um, from Ashby. Um, just walk down here with the camera a little bit and kind of an interesting process of getting all these containers full of eggs. As you can see, they, the crew's still got their work cut out for them. Interesting process here. We'll head in to see the eggs here. They're not bashful with the amount of eggs they put in these containers. Nice little view of the operation. I stopped at Lake Miltona at Woodland Res Resort and uh, Lake Miltona this Friday before the fishing opener. What are we, the 10th today? And look at, we just got one massive sheet of ice on Lake Miltona uh, north of Alexandria. We're going to live a long time before we see a massive sheet of ice on the 10th of May in central Minnesota. Just incredible. A little bit of melting here as you can see by the shore, but uh, something to remember kids as they say. You can tell people 50 years from now what it was like on May 2013 fishing opener time. Incredible.
Incredible. Males now? Yep, these are males. Uh, and can you show us uh, how you guys determine which is which, Jim? Sure. So just a little press. Oh, okay, on the, that's on the it stomach, just, and you can see the. It's the, the button then. Come out. Okay. Yep. You just. So that's, uh, a, that's a male. There, there. There's no characteristics as far as a curve on the tail or anything like nope, that. Nothing uh, <laughs> physically. The females. Uh, you you'll see the egg mass. So sure. Be larger in the in the stomach area, but. Uh, and from a standpoint, Jim, uh, as far as. Uh, uh, the size, if, if, if you pick a one out that's a female that's only a pound and a half or two, you still milk her? Or? You bet. Uh, they'll probably, the, the first time females that come in are, you know, maybe as small as 13 and a half, 14 inches. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, not a lot of eggs, but that's, uh, that's when they the start to sexually mature. So. Okay. And what, what would be a typical size female you're milking? In, in this run, we're probably, uh, you know, around that 20 to 22 inch. That's a pretty common uh, size female here. And, and if you go up uh, to a 30 inch, will you get twice as many eggs, or what's your thought that well, way? Well, we Any don't guesses? get a lot of 30 inches. We did have a 28 and a half we measured, uh, which is probably our largest one that we've got so far this spring and uh, she might have a quart of eggs which is about uh, 135,000 eggs okay okay yeah. compared to that uh, uh, four pounder then uh, uh, or three pound walleye how much less uh, on average probably about half that you know maybe a 60 70,000 eggs okay yeah very good here we'll watch a little more we got some kids from Ashby here today is that the deal right okay and you guys know Jim Borgrud up there? Is that name ring a bell? Huh? Yes. Oh, okay, that's good. I'm going to sneak around the other side here. Oh, she's fine. Oh, we got some nice walleyes there, guys. Look at them. I'm going to lean over you a little bit. You're fine. Oh, look at the, oh, we have the nice fish here. Sir, you said these are from last night that you're... No, they're from previous days. And you let them rest before you release them, kind of? No, they're not ready to give their eggs yet. Oh, okay, that's they're what it was. So we hold them and then we check them each day after that. And then if they're not ripe yet, then we put them on the other side. And the ones that are ripe, we strip them. The, the males you'll find are always ripe. Is that the old? No problem with the males. Oh. Oh. I know. And guys, for every female you milk, you also milk a male? Two to three males. Two to three males. Yep. Okay. Here at Central Marine, also a brand that we carry is the Ranger line. Here we have a 2050 Riata. The Riata is Ranger's fish and ski family fun model that uh, you can fish, ski, cruise, and this happens to be 20 feet powered by a Mercury 225 horse Verado. Uh, over here we have the new 175 tiller that Ranger came out with last year that has gotten to be a very popular boat, especially in the lakes around here, around Alexandria. It is fitting in very, very well for Ranger in their lineup. And in the background here you see other Prince Craft pontoons, uh, their deck boat uh, from a triple tune 25 foot down to the 17 foot.
If you're looking for an entry-level watercraft, and from sea to watercraft and Ollie service here in Alexandria, I invite you to come in and take a look at the SE-130 watercraft. This is one of the most popular watercraft in the world. Number one selling watercraft. This has brakes, neutral, mirrors, room for three people on it, 130 horsepower, plenty of room to ski and tube with, very fuel efficient. We invite you to come in, take a look, make your best deal at Ollie's right here in Alexandria, 1213 Broadway. Today in Form TVs in uh, uh, the Ottertail Lake area, Walker Lake Hatchery. Uh, Jim, introduce yourself and what we're going to see here for the viewers of Inform TV. Well, uh, hello there. My name is Jim Walters. I'm the area fishery supervisor out of our Fergus Falls DNR office. And uh, we are at the Walker Lake State Fish Hatchery. This is one of, uh, of uh, eight uh, cool water hatcheries that we have in the state. And we are in the process of taking uh, walleye eggs for our walleye production program, uh, operating on the Dead River, uh, northwest side of, of Otter Tail Lake. What, what do you see? And I was just talking to one of the guys here. The uh, all the walleyes uh, coming in are, are full of eggs yet. Uh, what? How do you think the spawn is as far as uh, what stage of it is? Well, we're kind of right in the middle of it right now. Uh, we're about two, two and a half weeks behind this year because of the uh, the late spring that we've had. Um, but the walleyes are ripe right now. They're coming in. We're about in the middle of our uh, our egg take process. So looking to wrap up here within probably another four or five days of operation. What, what about some of the other hatcheries around the state, uh, Grand Rapids, that type of thing? Are they milking walleyes at all yet? Right, pretty much all the stations uh, except our uh, egg take station up in uh, uh, Cutfoot Sioux okay. uh, have started and are actually in the process or maybe at the, at the peak of their runs also. What we're seeing on a statewide basis is a real intense run. Uh, those fish basically have been ready for uh, a few weeks already, waiting for lakes to open up, the water temperatures to warm up, and so we're seeing a, a big pulse of uh, walleyes uh, in these runs. So, in, in nature, is there any way that if they wait too long, they just abort the eggs, or do they always try to do their thing? They'll always try to spawn. Walleyes, uh, pike are, are the first spawners. Walleyes are, are behind the pike. Um, they will make their runs even with a late season like this. They're going to make their runs, they're going to spawn. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, the later the season, uh, almost the better it okay. is because we don't get, or there's less likely to get the cold fronts that come in that, uh, for instance, last year with the early spring, some of those things can really affect uh, walleye year classes with the cold fronts that, that come in and drop in the water temperatures. What, what from the standpoint, I'm old school, of course, and uh, Minnesota's always had the, the process of, of closing the season from basically the first of March until the second weekend of May, yet states like North Dakota, South Dakota uh, haven't done that. Uh, by letting uh, uh, the traditional opener going on, uh, we're protected by Mother Nature with ice, of course, but uh, uh, is it is it necessary to do what we're doing? Uh, I feel bad we're not being more restrictive. Is is that uh, uh, wise or, uh, or what's your thought? Well, the uh, the opener is definitely tradition. Um, you know, biologically speaking, like you mentioned, the other states uh, uh, have year-round openers and really don't see the effect on the, on the fish populations. Uh, what we can do and what we have done in the last 20 year plus years is we have quite a few walleye regulations on lakes to, to protect fish of certain sizes and um, you know we feel that, that that's the way to provide opportunity to fish um, but yet uh, uh, have some protection. So in a late year like this uh, we do have areas that we have posted closed um, where there's real, a lot of concentration of fish but generally speaking, lakes that have regulations will protect those fish that we want to protect and still allow some of the harvest. Our, our walleye populations are in real good condition and, and um, so um, you know, I'm not that concerned with a, a, a little bit of harvest going on too of, uh, of the smaller fish. What about a fisherman out this weekend catches a nice uh, big female that's full of eggs yet? Uh, 
Uh, is that going to have any effect on her? Traditionally, when the female's uh, about ready to spawn, will she not eat, or what's the process that way? Yeah, that's usually the case. Uh, the closer they get to actual spawning, they're probably not interested in eating. They're going to spawn and then be done, and then they, they kind of have a recuperation period before they really start you know, feeding again. Um, generally speaking, openers, people are catching a lot of the smaller males that are, are still up in the shallows or, or in the rivers. Um, this year there will be probably some females that will be there too. Most anglers, I think, have a, a good conservation ethic where they would release them, but um, you know, it's, def it's legal to, uh, to keep one over 20 inches too uh, in, your, in your bag limits. Okay, I, it looks like the guys are getting about set up. Uh, well, what are we going to be seeing here as far as uh, the crew working with uh, females and males today? Right, We're gonna, you're going to see the process of us taking the walleye eggs, fertilizing the eggs, um, uh, sorting the males and the females. Uh, we keep, keep those separate for our fertilization. Uh, process so you're gonna see uh, a lot of game fish too uh, basically when we block the river off all those species of fish that are coming upstream we catch we're just interested in the walleye so everything else gets cut loose when uh, we're done what's your thought uh, the, the, are the northerns done uh, spawning pretty much yeah when we first started uh, last Sunday was our first uh, uh, day that we took eggs uh, we were getting quite a few pike, but now pike numbers have gone way down. Like I said, this is with this late year, uh, pike and walleyes, they've been ready for quite a you know, number of weeks already, and it's going to be short and intense, uh, the spawning uh, season. Okay, well, and, and you as a fishery person, you think uh, it, it's actually going to be a positive for the population potentially? Well, I think, you know, with the late year, uh, pending any real cold fronts that would come in, and as, you know, we're already into the first part of May here, um, I, I think it could, could set up for a good, uh, real good walleye year class year here. Okay, well that sounds good, Jim. We look forward to going down to the river here and, and looking at the rest of it. Right, so thank you. Thank you. Sir, what, are you uh, putting the females in that? Uh, how, what? These are all females. These are all females. That was a big male. Days. All the fish we caught last night are over, over on the other side. And those were ones, ones that aren't ready to give their eggs yet. They, they're not ready, so you just flip them over. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Wales Hearing Center is proud to be part of the Starkey Hearing Alliance, and I hope you enjoy these videos explaining all the benefits of the latest developments of Starkey hearing aids, especially the mobile surfling. Hi, I'm Judy from Pete's County Market Floral. Come on in and see our variety of our green plants, our blooming plants, and our long stem roses. For all your floral needs, contact me, Judy, at Pete'sCountyMarket.com. Hi, Mike Neese, produce manager here at Pete's County Market. We have just expanded our fresh organic fruits and vegetables. As you can see behind me here, we have many different items to choose from. Come check us out next time you're in the store. Remember this holiday season, whenever you get to Alexandria, uh, make sure you stop in at the local Cenex store that has gas, tires, LP, and a great convenience store. Hey, you got a fishing line hanging on. Oh, what were you doing oh, earlier yeah. day on your day? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. you see it? Have you a look? What was it? It's the fishing line. Uh, no, it's in there. You want? What you could okay. do is just kind of yeah, like an S shape back and forth. Okay. We want to wait for more eggs. <laughs> wow. Oh. It's still <laughs> using the eagle feather for the blender, huh? I know. I feel special. Oh, oh, it's gonna yeah. Play <laughs> a big fat one on him. That's funny. Yeah, you get one ready. So how many males do you take and put in here versus females? Two, two to three turns I come up here and get a good look at it. So are the males always ready to go then? Okay. Yep. Yep. Have you ever met one that wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Oh, that is pretty good. <laughs> good point, good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get up quick in the wet there. You know, half <laughs> quarter to a half a quarter. Even a quarter of eggs, there's a hundred, average 135,000. 
so crazy. Wow. Oh, okay, I got you can shoot one right in there. What's and the biggest female? Of, you can bring another load of females or males. Okay. Yeah, if you haven't seen this too yet. How big of females have you guys had in this year yet? Some, any 10 pounder stuff? They're probably 10, but uh, typically with, you know, 28, maybe 29, we don't see many 30 inch fish coming in. Can you stand in. a okay. little more this way? Yeah, so no, that's that way fine. they can see. Of course. These would be. See, it had a big running sale next weekend? I was going to say she's in shape to block. What? Get him next? Or her next? Okay. Yeah. It's grandkids and kids. Now, Jim, uh, these eggs, what percent will hatch, uh, fertilize at first, I should say, when you're doing your thing here? Yeah, we have a, we have a pretty good, uh, over a 90% fertilization rate. Uh, okay. Um, I would say 80 to 90%, and then we'll end up with about a 60 to 70% hatch. What about in nature? In nature, you, can, you know, generally, you could probably figure 1% or less uh, okay. of, uh, you know, the eggs that are laid down. Naturally, but it uh, seems like a low percent. But keep in mind that we're actually only getting a fraction of the walleyes that are out there that are spawning um, in this run. So, majority of fish uh, stay out in the lakes and, and uh, spawn on the shoreline. So. Okay, that, that's what I was wondering about. That right. in, in nature, really, the, the lakes, if they have a good gravel bottom, or it, do they tend to search for that, or do they just tend to? Yeah. Yep, they key in on the, those kind of areas, and uh, that's why it's kind of protecting those areas from uh, shoreline disturbances are really important in those lakes where natural reproduction is, is really providing the walleye opportunity. So a big lake like uh, Otter Tail here, that tends to be most of it just in the lake then that uh, uh, where the spawning is done? Right, yeah, the tagging study that, uh, that we did uh, back in the early 80s kind of found out that basically about 10% of the walleyes make upstream movements in the outer tail and, and uh, the dead rivers. And 90% actually stay out in the lake and spawn on uh, good habitat out there. Okay, that's interesting. As far as uh, <clears throat> what what depth would they tend to look for? Or is, is it more of a, a structure thing for the big female? And right, it's more of a structure, uh, you know, shoreline areas. Generally, that kind of substrate that they're looking for is probably three foot or less, you know, maybe four foot or less uh, on shoreline. Uh, reefs that are out on uh, big reefs that may be out in some of the lakes, uh, shallow enough and have the, the pro, you know, the right kind of bottom, uh, they'll try to spawn on those or they will spawn on those areas too. Okay, and it, as, as far as, uh, say uh, there's a, a six pound uh, female uh, ready to spawn, how, how many female or males will be following her? Oh, it, you know, probably if she's, if she's ready to go, there'll be probably at least a couple, three behind her, maybe up to four or five. Okay. Yep. And and from a standpoint, uh, the females are obviously the biggest. Where, where do male walleyes tend to peak out as far as size? Well, we can, in this run here, in fact,